We are in Kumamoto, a city located in the prefecture with the same name on the island of Kyushu. This is where Kobato Miku was born a few decades ago. Her parents were a remarried couple and she has a half-brother who's 11 years older from her father's previous marriage. As you could imagine, she was a very active child, much to the dismay of her parents, who struggled to keep an eye on her, as she was the kind of child who snuck out of her house to play or run all around as soon as she was taken to large open spaces. She loved to play with boys at games like Chanbara, which is basically sword fighting for kids, or catch insects in the summer, but those little trips and games cost Miku a lot of bumps and bruises. Miku was introduced into music very early by her grandmother, who went to an Enka karaoke class. When she was around seven or eight, Miku fell in love with music and singing as she followed her grandmother to local public hall gatherings. At this time, Miku only knew Enka, so that's all she sang. The first song she learned was Jindo Monogatari by Yoshimi Tendo. <laughs> Her mother was worried that Miku would only be interested in Enka, so she asked her to listen to other musical genres and offered her a CD of the idol band Morning Musume. And so, with time, Miku came to experience and listen to more and more different kinds of music. In high school, Miku was in the broadcasting club. <laughs> of course she was. This is the club responsible for those announcements that you hear in the school from time to time like morning or lunch break news. Back then, Miku's friends were really into bands and took her to live performances of smaller amateur groups covering popular songs. Miku was not that interested in the bands, but this experience made her look into more bands to listen to. During her research, she came across Tokyo Jihen, a Japanese rock band formed around the popular singer Shina Ringo. Miku was stunned by their sound and finally found the music that she wanted to do. It was also during this time that Miku's parents got divorced and her father totally disappeared from her life. From then on, she had to live with her grandmother. It was a hard time for her and her family, but she tried to find a proper high school and think about her future. No time to think about making music for a living, even though this idea was starting to grow in her mind. When she was at university, Miku missed a lot of classes because she was working part-time to earn enough money to participate in multiple auditions in Tokyo. The problem was, she never told her mother about all her travels to the big city. And the more Miku went to Tokyo, the more she wanted to live there. So, in October 2010, on her birthday, Miku presented her I want to live in Tokyo plan to her mother to try and reassure her. This plan was basically to find enough part-time work to pay for her life there, along with vocal training. Miku knew that living in a big city like Tokyo would cost a lot, so she took as many jobs as she could. At one point, she had three different jobs, leaving her with just a few hours of sleep per day. She was willing to do anything to realize her dream. 
One of her jobs was at a maid cafe in Kumamoto. This is the kind of job that fit her perfectly, as she was very interested in customer service, loved to talk to people, and loved the idea of wearing a cute outfit at work. This particular maid cafe only lasted six months, until December 31st, 2010. It's hard for this kind of business to last in local cities like Kumamoto because of the lack of new customers daily. With nothing holding her back in Kumamoto and enough money from all her hard work, Miku quit university and moved to Tokyo to start a new life pursuing her dream of becoming a singer. Now that she was living in Tokyo, Miku easily found a part-time job as she had already a lot of experience from her life in Kumamoto. Miku discovered the concept of maid cafe in her hometown, so she thought that it would be a good idea to try and work in a maid cafe in Akihabara, the place where maid cafes are the most popular in Japan. She started to work at the At Home Cafe in May 2011 under the name Himawari, which means sunflower. This maid cafe was way bigger than the one in Kumamoto, and this one held performances and events where Miku could work on her singing regularly. It was a great experience for her, as she learned a lot about human relations, handling different types of people, and even calming down angry customers arguing with each other. After all, Miku wanted to do everything to make everyone happy. She also learned a lot from overseas customers and how they perceive made cafes as a part of the Japanese culture. Miku worked almost a year for At Home Cafe, but quit in January 2012. She had a ceremony celebrating her time working there, and there was a lot of messages from regulars and overseas customers. She even wrote a moving message on the blog of the Maid Cafe. <laughs> イベント私得でした。あと素敵なお花もありがとう。あとチェキの受け取りがまだの方、なるべく早くお絵かきして、ドンキに持っていきますので、後日ドンキへお願いします。ごめんなさい。いろんなことがあったりしたけど、やっぱり私
真っ白なんですけどすごい嬉しいですと今後ユニットとして3人で頑張っていきたいと思いますのでまだまだなんだろう未熟なところとかいっぱいあると思うんですけど一緒に応援していただけたらなと思いますと私は熊本から出てきたんですけどすごい親にもいい報告ができてとアルバイト先のこの。メイドさんをしてるんですけど、常連さんも見に来てくれていい報告ができることがすごくすごく嬉しいです。これから頑張っていきます。ありがとうございました。This contest allowed Miku to join an underground idol band or Chika Idol in Japanese, named Lil Kuman three months later in March 2012. An underground idol band works with a minor label and will only perform in very small areas or events. It's well known that very few underground idol bands can become bigger and join a major label, so the chances for Lil Kuman to get bigger were really small. No pun intended. The name of the band came from the very short height of the three members, and that the birth flower of December 9th, when the result of the audition was announced, was Kuman. Lil Kuman was active until April 13th, 2013, when they announced. They had disbanded during a one man concert in Shinjuku Orebako due to Miku and another member quitting the band. About a month after the release of the third single called Super Trooper and their first one man concert in the same venue. In the end, Lil Kuman released three singles and performed about a hundred shows during a year of activities. In an interview, Miku confirmed that it was not her thing to sing cute idol songs. She didn't hate it. But it was too different from the music she wanted to sing. Back to square one for Miku, who decided to send her resume to Platinum Passport. Explaining the kind of music she wanted to do. The company reached back to Miku and scheduled a meeting to talk about her project. Let's imagine an abbreviated form of this conversation. アイドルではなく歌手になりたくて1年ほどで辞めさせていただきました自分のやりたい音楽性とは違うなって気づいたんですバンドとかには興味ないのバンドは好きだし東京事変さんにも憧れていますそれに可愛い音楽よりもかっこいい音楽がやりたいです小バトはいろいろなバンドを調べて聞いているときに東京事変に出会って恋に落ちたバンドメイド日本のエピソードで「群青日和が人生を変えた」とまで言っているこの瞬間からコバトはかっこいい音楽のバンドを聴くようになりバンドを組むという考えが頭に浮かぶようになったもしこの曲がなかったらコバトはバンドを組むことなど思いつかずバンドメイドは存在すらしなかっただろうあでもメイドも好きです。メイドとバンドを合わせたら面白いねじゃあ混ぜちゃいましょう On May 29th, 2013 Platinum Passport posted an audition announcement for anyone who wanted to join a new rock band performing with Maid outfits They also presented the first version of Band Maid's logo In this post, it was specified They were looking for women between the ages of 15 and 24 who can play guitar, bass Drums and keyboards while wearing a maid outfit. They also clarified that the applicants must not be currently under contract with a production company or record label and must not be planning to debut as a professional. Miku was actively looking for potential members herself and found a young musician posting guitar covers on YouTube and Nico Nico. The name of this guitarist was Kanabi.
Miku contacted Konami through the talent agency to present her project. Konami was pretty excited to join Bandmaid, and the maid outfit was definitely not an issue for her. The next one was Akane on drums. And with that, Akane asked Misa to join her new band. Misa's band had just ended their activity, so the timing was perfect for her as she wanted to continue playing bass. Bandmaid, originally consisting of four members, was ready for its debut. They started rehearsals, but after about a month, felt that something wasn't quite right. Miku's voice alone didn't fit with this kind of music, and she didn't want to relive what happened with Little Kumin, so the idea of bringing in another vocalist to contrast with Miku's voice was raised. A new audition was conducted, inviting everyone managed by the agency who could fit with this project. Bandmade members and management found the profile of a recently scouted young singer to whom they proposed to audition. She was a model, dancer, singer, who came to Tokyo to realize her dream of becoming a professional singer. And her name was Psyche. <laughs> With their newfound experience gained while recruiting the other members, the management knew that they shouldn't talk about the main outfit to Psyche if they wanted her to come to the audition. So, they didn't. ね、<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> From this crazy idea of mixing cute outfits with hard rock music, four talented young ladies joined Miku to form an impossible band whose goal is to dominate the world through music. And this band was called Bandmade. Bandmay didn't waste any time after finding enough members, as they started to perform live on July 24th, 2013, before Psyche even joined the band at Otsuka Deepa in Tokyo. They continued for two more shows before opening for Passport and Silent Siren on October 22nd, 2013, at Shibuya AX with their complete lineup. This was Bandmay's first live. This venue could hold 1,500 people, so it was a great opportunity for our newly formed band. Bandmate started to be more active on Twitter on July 19, 2013, to promote concerts and news about the band. Their YouTube channel had been created on October 22, 2013, and slowly grew over the years. Bandmade also opened an Amiblo blog that was deleted in 2016 to use the official website that we know today even though it looked quite different from its current design. The management did a great job regarding the band's promotion in social media, 
but Bandmade had trouble standing out and reaching more people. During the first two years, most of their concerts were empty. They struggled to build their own fan base, and the future of the band was very uncertain. Bandmade tried to participate in Battle of the Bands with some other idol bands, but very few people from the audience were actually there for them. So they tried everything to expand their fan base. They promoted their merch every time they could. They took photos and thanked fans for coming to see them. Miku worked in a noodle cafe in Akihabara until 2016, and she also sold tickets by hand. The Noodle Cafe was a service operated by Platinum Passport, where you buy a cup of noodles and you can choose which idol will pour hot water into the cup. Then you will have around three minutes to talk with her until the noodles are ready. Until the first one-man show in Shibuya Milky Way, Misa was very unsure about her future in Bandmade and talked to the management about quitting. And for this particular concert, the management booked a venue and asked the members to invite at least 100 people. In the end, they managed to get around 50 of their friends and acquaintances in the front row. It was truly a dark time for Bandmade. It was also around that time that they released the MV of Thrill from their first single, I to Jonetsu no Matadoru. The song released in November 2014 was different from what they usually do, and even very different from the main song of this single. Thrill was a success on YouTube and was very well received during concerts. A few months later, on April 5th, 2015, Thrill was uploaded on a Facebook page called J-Rock Radio. This page introduced music from Japan like Visual K or metal bands to people from overseas, and the video gathered more than one million views in four days. You know, in comparison, it took 17 days for the music video of Unleash to hit 1 million views, and that was the fastest any Bandmade video grew. The response of Bandmade social media from overseas fans was huge, so huge that they were afraid that their Twitter account had been hacked. They also opened their Facebook page on April 9th, 2015, following the success of Thrill. It literally saved Bandmade as they later learned that management was about to end their contract and that this single was going to be their last. It was also the shock band made needed to find their own path and start their world domination. From this moment, the band committed to make harder songs and one and a half years later, they played their first concert overseas in Mexico.皆さんこんにちは。ミカです。今日はスペシャルゲストをご紹介します。レディットでアクティブに活動していてインタビューから私が元々聴いていた音楽はファンクロックやファンクなどでハードロックやメタルについてはほとんど知りませんでした。2019年11月に以前から友人に勧められていたベビーメタの曲をYouTubeでいくつか聴いたら 
サイドバーにバンドメイドのスリルが現れましたそのサムネイルを見た瞬間これはかっこいいに違いないと直感しました音を聞く前からギャップのコンセプトが伝わったんです実際にスリルを聞いて途中までは悪くないなくらいに思っていたらミサさんのベースソロでやられました次にダイスを聞いてミサさんのベースに完全に心を奪われました私のようなファンクロックファンにとってミサさんのファンキーなベースは答えられない魅力がありますそれからバンドメイドの MV を一気に見て1週間後にはもう CD を注文してライブの予定をチェックしていましたちょうどその時は東京近辺でライブがなく次のライブはツアーファイナルの LINE キューブ渋谷だったのですぐにチケットを買いましたまた歌詞を見ながら聴くうちに小鳩さんの歌詞の素晴らしさに気づき小鳩さんの大ファンになりました小畑さんの歌詞は内容もいいですが何よりも音がいいんですん日本の曲では英語がよく使われますが同じメロディーに英語と日本語を当てるのはかなり珍しいですそして日本語で母音を落として平音節を作るテクニックが素晴らしいですここを8音節で歌っていますが元の日本語は15音節あります同じ年の12月レディットを見つけてインタビューの英訳があるのを知りましたが魅惑のインタビューもまだまだたくさんありました自分で英訳したいと思いましたが私は英語ネイティブではないし当時は音楽用語も詳しくなかったので無謀ではないかと思いましたでも小鳩さんが背中を押してくれたんです「もし小畑さんが私の立場だったらやれることをやるだろう自分の想像さえ超えていくだろうと思ったんです」なのでもし私の翻訳が役に立ったなら私ではなく私に勇気をくれた小畑さんに感謝してくださいバンドメイドには人生を変える力がありますそうですよね T ・シンジさんどうもありがとうございましたそしてバンドメイドさん小畑さん多くの人の人生を素晴らしいものにしてくださりありがとうございますうわーもう30分近く経っちゃいましたここでちょっとお休みにして動画の残りはまた来週見ることにしましょう次回は作詞家小鳩さんのお話からしようと思いますではまた次回バイバーイ